my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I'm the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Ra. It is so sad that I have to say, hopefully, my friend, because there are so many, so many, many persons who even claim that they are good at heart. They claim that they represent peace. But I have to hope that these are my friends because as soon as they say I'm peaceful, they will take their life and slice your throat. This we have seen throughout history. So many of these, uh, especially religious, religious type folks, they claim peace. We represent peace. We want peace. But if you look at their history of their religion, you'll see nothing but violence. You see murder and mayhem in the name of God. And if you look at these persons, even in their personal life, it is filled with jealousy, envy, hatred, thoughts of murder, if not murder, rape, envy, jealousy, killing people for their money, killing people for their land, adultery, fornication, and pedophilia. And the sins can go on and on and on. So it is sad that I live in a world that I have to say, hopefully, my friend, to those who represent peace. This is not expected from those who don't want peace. It is expected. And I don't want them to be my friend. I'm reaching out to those who claim they want to be treated just like they would want to be treated. But there's always seemed to be a, a catch-24. But you got to believe and you got to do what I do. If I am a Christian, then I want all of y'all to be Christians. If not, you're going to go to hell and I hate you. Or you have to be a Muslim. If not, if you don't believe in the Quran and Prophet Muhammad, then I hate you. Somebody has to be destroyed. Something is wrong. And that is why we are living in the condition that we're living today. Because we live in a world of those who talk peace, but are hypocrites. They may be loyal to their God. They may be loyal to the Bible and Quran. But they are not loyal to peace. When it comes to peace, it is lip service. And they are hypocrites. That is why I tell us, there is no such thing as peace. What you call peace is controlled violence. Because as soon as a person tells you peace, they might turn right around. And take a gun and blow your brains out. That's why you have to always walk to, up to another person and say, peace? You have to ask. Because you're not sure. Even in a house dedicated to peace, you might be, uh, their response to you may be violence. So that is why we are living in this period of time that we are living due to hypocrites, deceivers, and liars under the guise of peacemakers. But this they are not. The only peace they want 
is more slaves to bow down and worship and do what they think you should do. What they think, not what they know you should do, but what they think you should do. And their thinking is based on what? Is it good for us as humanity or is it detrimental to us as humanity? We are now and have become, we are living in a transition period where somebody got to go. Either you're going to be good or you're going to be evil. Either you are going to be right or you're a deceiver. So now, even according to their religious teaching, there must be a separation. The weak from the terror. The good from the wicked. The righteous from the unrighteous. And I don't care what title you put on yourself. The judgment will be in accord with your works. Not what you say. Not what you talk about. But, but, why, but by what you do. Your actions. Your actions speak louder than your words. Now for many of you who are familiar with this channel. Some of you know that my primary topic is always an issue of race. The black people this and the white man this. Throw a little, little bit of Asian in there. Throw a little bit of the Native American people. That's what this channel is all about. So you have folks, they want to defend their position. Don't talk about the white man. Uh, stop talking about the blacks and Blah, blah, blah. My official position. See, I'm not here to argue with you about race. I could care less about race. Because me, personally, I will say this to make this clear. Because I'm not going to debate you back and forth about race. Because for me, personally, black, white, red, yellow, all humanity should be destroyed. If it was up to me, within the next 30 seconds, all of y'all be dead. You'll be destroyed so tough, your DNA will never, won't survive. Any life form that comes after you, they will not find your bones. They will not find an old skirt. They will find no pictures, no CDs. Nothing of you will exist if it was up to me. Because the human being has not proven itself worthy of living. You are too intelligent to act and behave and be so materialistic and insane as you have become. So I would suggest if it was up to me, because I'm not going to argue with you about black, white, and anything else. I just said kill all of us. So brother, that means you will die too. Yes! Yes! All of us! Yes! Destroy, destroy humanity, period. Some of you don't want to hear that. Because you fear death and you want to continue, you want to continue your, your award winning ways. Well, it's not up to me. But even the prophets in your religious books, and they existed thousands of years ago, and even modern prophets of whom you ignore today, they tell you your destruction is right around the corner. They see you as a destroyed life form. You're living in a transition period. It is not even about black. It's not even about white. It's not about race. It is about good versus evil. That's what you have to get through your head. You make black good. Or you make white good. And you make black evil. Or you, or you make black good. Or however y'all want to play that sick game.
You're living in a transition period. Your Bible and Quran speaks of it or describes it as the day of judgment or the day of Armageddon. And the day of Armageddon is the ultimate battle, not between black and white, but good versus evil. Black and white was created due to the war or the fight between righteous and unrighteous, good versus evil. It is a consequence. And now you're living and we are living at a time where it now all is going to go down. Two objects cannot occupy the same space. For the last few hundred years, wickedness and evil, deceit, people have been living in darkness. Either we're going to continue that way or we're going to get right. Or, <laughs> my suggestion is just to destroy all of you. You had too much mercy, too much compassion. Sooner or later, the buck stops. Sooner or later, mercy and compassion and understanding and being nice runs out. Sooner or later, you must pay for your actions. And if your actions are good, then you should be awarded appropriately. But if they are bad, then you should also have a consequence. And that's what you fear because for the last thousand, few thousand years, we have been conditioned and we are used to violence. We talk about peace, but have never known it. So here are all these religious folks running around here talking about peace. You show me in, in the history of humanity on this planet. Show me peace. Prove it to me. You don't know nothing about it. The only thing you know about is hell. And that's all that you build with your hands is hell. Because hell is in your mind. Peace is just something you talk about. Something that you think you might want. Because you feel more comfortable arguing, debating, killing, raping, robbing, and all the other murderous things that you do on a daily uh, basis. But you don't want to be punished. You don't want to die. But you deserve death. Oh Jesus. Oh Muhammad. Save me. You want to be saved. You're not worthy of being saved. Tell me what do you do. You pray. Oh, you pray seven times a day. Oh, you just pray and you pray. But at the same time, for all the prayers that you do, you have thoughts of evil. You act evil. You carry out wickedness and unrighteous behavior. You support evil because you're scared of wicked folks. Brother Martin Luther King, I quote, he said that evil exists. Because good men do nothing, so you sit on your ass and let the unrighteous and the wicked do whatever they want to do. Save me. You're not worthy of being saved. What have you done? Christian or Muslim or whatever you want to call yourself, atheist. What have you done to be saved? To be worthy of being spared? Religion. All over this earth, the influence, all over this planet, there's churches and mosques and synagogues and all these religions. But yet and still, religion influences the human being, but yet and still, you're still evil and wicked. How is that possible? How is it possible that religion dominates governments? Religion dominates families. And individuals, but your world, that religion, 90% or more, you influence and you dominate, but you produce evil. How is that possible? How can religions of peace and prosperity and love, brotherhood and sisterhood, how can you produce a world, people starving, murder, lies and deceit, pedophilia, all kinds of wickedness, but you have all this religion. How is it possible? And religion 
influences and controls everything. That should tell you something. And y'all want to be saved. According to the Bible and re or religious teachings, I said the Bible. That's why I'm getting this from. It says that the believers in Jesus are so happy and they await his return. No, I don't think that you will want to wait and happy to see Jesus. Because the Jesus that was Mr. Peaceful, love everybody, before he was crucified, that's the one you think going to return. But that's not how it goes because according to your scriptures, upon Jesus' return, he's coming with a sword. And a sword is not designed to slice bread, to slice open apples. It is designed to chop people's heads off. Swords is designed when you're ready to go to war. And Jesus, upon Jesus' return, he's to come back during this what we call the war of Armageddon. It is the ultimate, the final clash between good versus evil according to religious teachings. So I don't know what y'all so happy about. And then, even before Jesus can really get into dealing with the, with the wicked, he has to clean up those who believe. Oh, my. Woo! I, you know something? I want to get with Jesus because I want to point to Jesus. I want to show him all the Christians, especially the ones I know, he ain't right. She ain't right. They ain't right. I want to pour them out. With your arrogant ass. Think you won't go to heaven. We'll see what Jesus has to say. Because Jesus, the Christ of this Bible, comes back to clean his own house up first. Then deal with Satan and his boys next. And the war. This war of Armageddon it is described. It is so filled with violence and killing that the blood that will be shed will be so high it will rise to the bridle of a horse. A horse is a pretty tall creature. Many of you who are familiar with the horse. And you know what a bridle is. The bridle is that little gadget they put around the horse's head to control the horse. So blood will raise that high. Oh man. So this ain't about peace. So where is all this peace crap that y'all talking about when the ultimate battle will bring blood and lots of it. Blood also represents birth. When and with when a, an animal or a human being gives birth, the woman sheds blood. There's a showing of blood. Birth brings change. The reason why there's so much blood in this battle of Armageddon is because there's a great change coming. And either that change is to continue to live in a wicked and detrimental world for the human being or it is a change for the better. The end of evil and unrighteous behavior or moral behavior worth it for all has nothing to do with morality. That's a religious thing. But those things which are detrimental to the, to the development of your mind to the, to the development of the Human being, those things, some births are unwanted. So people seek abortion because they don't, they don't want that life for whatever reason to come into existence. Because birth means change, means new life. And some of us don't want a new life. We don't want change. Because somewhere in this wicked world, we benefit. 
So if I am a Caucasian person and my skin gives me an advantage, it gives me favoritism, why would I want change? It's good just the way it is. But those who don't have that advantage want to change. At the same time, is it fair that you live in the same nation, but due to skin color, there is no equality? Is that fair? It is not fair. So there must be a change. There must be a changing of the guard. So we have here an unwanted birth. There are those who want to seek abortion. That's why my channel, that is why many other brothers and sisters channel, even white people's channel, that speak real truth, that bring it to you the way that it needs to be brought. They are flagged. The channels are removed. We are harassed because we're bringing words to awaken the minds of the people so they get ready for the change so they don't help abort the child but help deliver the child into the life. So the wicked and the unrighteous, those who are content in this life, those who benefit from evil behavior, they want a they want an abortion and they are looking for the Messiah or the Messiahs to kill them because the Messiahs can awaken up the masses and warn them and let them know about this great transition that is coming for them to let them know they can choose a side in this great battle of what the scriptures call Armageddon. If you stay ignorant, you may fall on the wrong side. You don't want to do that. So the Messiah or the Messiahs or the Saviors, the wicked, the deceivers, the hypocrites are seeking to murder them because they symbolize change. They symbolize a new birth. They are warners and they don't want you to be warned. They want you to they want you to be in a transition period and don't even know it. Hoping that you will continue to side with them. To keep things just the way they are. Do you want things just the way they are? Do you want to pass this life that we're living in to your children? I don't care what race you are. Do you like this life? You should not. You should be happy that a Christ comes back. You should be hoping for him to come back with a sword and take heads from the wicked. Because you deserve better than living like this. Greedy ass people, murderers, rapists, pedophiles. The evil goes on and on and on. You need to get rid of this mentality once and for all. This, uh, this, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This, this, this picture, this condition will become so violent. And I know in religion, and I know y'all want peace, you want love, and that is, it's something that you can hope for. But see, those who are in power, they're not going to give it up easy because it benefits them. They like things just the way they are. That's why Jesus, that's why this Christ must come back with a sword. Because he already knows the wicked not going to give it up without a fight. they got to they have to be removed by force. It ain't about black. It ain't about white. It's about are you righteous or unrighteous? Are you good or are you evil? 
and this war called Armageddon, according to biblical teachings, it says that it would become so violent and murderous, so much anarchy and mayhem and chaos would be going on, suffering, that you will pray for death and it will not come. You want to die. You want to get out of it. But death will be running from you. What is so amazing <clears throat> is that unrighteous people, wicked folks that do wrong, actually get angry because you fight against them. Now, here are people that wrongly convict someone. They know they was wrong. And when the person files a civil suit in court, the prosecutors and all these people being sued, they were actually getting attitude, knowing they wrong. You have people. I've seen cases where, for example, a male abuses a woman. And then she calls the police. Here you are, a 300 pound man beating up on a 110 pound woman and then you get angry at her for calling the police. What the hell? You have black people living in America for over 400 years. We have been called citizens. We don't want to be treated special. I don't want nothing special from you. Just give me my just due due to my being a citizen of this nation. I have fought. We have fought in every war since Christmas Addicts. We pay our taxes. We are good citizens of this nation. But when we stand up and speak the truth about how we are we are discriminated against. How this continues today. Not yesterday, because we know about yesterday. It still continues today. These beasts, these demons, have the nerve to tell us what you complained about. Why you feel with hate. Oh, <laughs> That really gets me. Here are Caucasian people and their offspring have the nerve to tell us about our hate when you have shown hatred, discrimination, and evil towards us as long as we've been in the United States. What kind of, oh, you got a lot of nerve. Yeah, Jesus, I wait. Woo, give me a sword. I want to fight with Christ. Anybody to get rid of these bastards, these demons. Give me a sword. They got a lot of nerve. I'm not saying all Caucasian white people. Because, see, there are going to be a lot of Caucasian people Who's going to take up the sword and be on the side of right? They're going to have your back. Because like I said before, it's not about color. It's about are you good or are you wicked? Because if the majority of Caucasian people in this nation was good, there never would have been a slavery to begin with. Oh, then they turn around and they say, y'all lazy. How the hell can this, these suckers talk about black people being lazy? Who the one needed a slave? The slave do 
putting to work. So how the hell we're lazy? And you've been lazy for 300 years doing nothing. The slaves doing all your damn work. The only thing you've been hard at work doing, being busy, is tricking the slave. Making him believe you love him. And give him your religion. And keep his mind all messed up. You learn how to keep the slave in his slave-like condition even when he even when you set him free. Oh, you a master deceiver. It takes a Jesus, it takes a Christ, it takes a God to come down and deal with these people because they are masters. What you don't understand is that these racist Caucasian people have turned into God. That's why a God or a son of God must come and deal with them. You a damn slave. The only thing you know how to do is talk. You either talk about doing something or you either are just happy. You have uh, this type of mentality. Well, <laughs> well, if you can't beat them, join them. That's y'all mentality. Stupid, dark European, nigger, trash, negroes. At the same time, you talk about how you love Jesus. Well, Jesus, the Christ of the revelation in this battle of Armageddon, you don't want to deal with him because he's coming, coming back with a sword. It ain't going to be pretty. <laughs> you don't want to accept responsibility. We are in this condition. The human being is because you have all these wicked folks. And they don't want to accept responsibility when they do wrong. Nobody want to accept the responsibility. Now, excuse me a second. Uh, I was watching... I think it was HBO, one of these shows on cable. It was a uh, documentary about people on death row. This uh, this Hispanic uh, fella, he was on death row for murdering his ex-girlfriend and her mother in broad daylight. He's sitting on death row. And they were interviewing this man and he said outright, he said to, to the interviewer, he said, um, I murdered two people. And I probably killed some people y'all don't know nothing about. But they got me on these two murders. I do not want no appeals. If I'm mad enough to take a life, then I'm mad enough to give a life. Well, I took two lives. He only, he only has one life to live. So he directed his attorneys who can file appeal and he'll be on death row for years and years and years he said no if I can take a life I can give a life and within 30 some days 60 days he was executed why am I telling you this there are those who can do wrong they're not going to make excuses. They're not going to finger point. I'm wrong. And if the consequence means death, then so be it. But see, we live in the United States of America. 
and they are not like that. You can talk to you black and blue in the face. They're going to point fingers. I talk about our condition, the descendants of slaves in America. I talk about our treatment and condition in this nation. The first thing they want to do, they want to try to deny. But history, <laughs> you can't deny your own history that you wrote in your books. So they begin finger pointing. Uh, look at Africa. Look what uh, uh, Arabs had slaves. The Africans stole slaves. Finger pointing. What do that have to do with what you did? What you're doing has nothing to do with it. That does not exempt you. Because Arabs had slaves. I don't live in Arabia. I don't live in Africa. What you say is true. Have nothing to do with our situation. Then the children, the offspring. I don't, I don't owe you no apology. I don't have to show you no remorse. I, I ain't did nothing. You did not do nothing. And that's the problem. You don't do nothing. You have made no attempt to heal the condition or the injury that your forefathers done to black people. I give you an example. Let's let's use McDonald's for an example. Okay, you go to McDonald's, you get a Big Mac. There's a razor blade somehow got in the Big Mac. Ah! So you blood coming all out your mouth and whatever. Uh-oh. Time to sue McDonald's. So. You go to court. You suing McDonald's. McDonald's is a corporation. Now, McDonald's is going to use your defense. So, the, the lawyer for McDonald's go before the judge and say, Your Honor, you must throw this case out because Mr. Lee was the chief executive officer at McDonald's when this happened. He is no longer, he died. So now we have Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown has nothing to do with McDonald's during that period of time when the incident in question happened. What do you think will happen in a court of law? It makes no difference. Who is in, whoever is in charge is responsible for the damages. So Mr. Lee is dead when this happened. Does not exempt McDonald's from what McDonald's is responsible for. So you live in the United States. Whoever is the president. Whoever is the Congress. Whoever is the leadership. Is responsible. For the damages caused by George Washington. Caused by. You, you listen as Grant. What's his name? Uh, Stonewall Jackson. Or whoever. They are responsible. Not you as an individual. You talking about what I do. It don't make no difference what you talking about. And as a citizen, you still responsible for the actions of your government. Or if your government is wrong, then you need to put them in check. Rise up against them. Take up take up arms like the Constitution says. You have a right to form militia and you have the right to bear arms. Not just to fight a foreign enemy, but to take your Congress and your president out. Woo! Oh. Listen to me, white folks, because I don't think you can hear me. I got to get a drink on that. If your government is doing wrong under 
in your constitution and it says very clearly if they are not representing you and looking out for your best interest you have the right to full militia you have the right to bear arms to take that government out so here you are you have government that have caused you to have this race problem they don't want to deal with it so you need to take them out if they don't want to deal with it because it's bringing this is an unnecessary problem you handing from generation to generation it's not going nowhere because as long as people are not being treated right as long as there are is a, a oppression they they are going to continue to fight to be free just like George Washington, Patrick Henry, John Adams, and all those forefathers, that's what they did. They had to rise up and fight to get oppression off of them. So why do you believe that black folks should not stand up and fight? At least complain. <laughs> why? <clears throat> why are you guys complaining? Everything is wonderful and beautiful. <laughs> the master. On his table. Is beautiful steaks. Beautiful pies and cakes. In the master's table. And then. When he eats. What he wants. He throws the bones. And the scraps. To his dog or cat. Now for a dog or a cat. That is acceptable. But how dare you. Throw me a damn bone. How dare you. Throw me the crust of the pie. Your damn scraps. I'm a citizen. Black people are citizens of this nation. Just like you are. Spect. Special treatment. Black folks don't need no special treatment if we were able to eat off the table instead of waiting for your damn scraps. Your special treatment. Your scraps. Finger pointing. Always finger pointing. You don't want to accept responsibility. That's why there must be a war. Of Armageddon. That's why the day of judgment is here. That's why it's here. This must come to conclusion. Either we're going to live under evil and stop talking all that damn peace crap and just everybody just be wicked. Everybody go for theirs. Or either. We should be come extinct. I prefer extinction. You have found you are unworthy of life. You are unworthy of being saved. If I was Jesus, I would never return. And at the rate things are going, it don't look like he going to show up. You've been waiting on this Christ. You've been waiting on Jesus to return for over 2,000 years. So, apparently, so apparently, he's going to leave you to your own vices. But regardless, for those of us who are awakened, there is a transition going on. Either you're good and you're righteous or you're wicked and you are and I could care less about what your color is because I'm going by your actions not by what you talk I'm not going to be your slave I'm not going to be a slave under the white man and I'm not going to be a damn slave under a black face nigga either not me I'm not going to be no slave to no God I'm not going to be bowed down to nobody I want to enjoy my life. This life was given to me to enjoy. Not serve some sucker. I'm not your damn servant. We can share the work. I will serve.
serve you a little bit, you serve me. We're going to have balance in this relationship. I'm not going to be your damn sucker. I'm not your slave. That's the bottom line. Let me warn you. As many have warned you before. But we're going to bring this to modern times. Individualism is about to die. Everybody, you know, one of the the uh, most most quoted things that black, uh, I'm not going to say black, dark Europeans, one of the most favorite things that dark Europeans like to say, I'm doing my own thing. I am on YouTube suggesting to us to unite with one another. You must unite with your family. You must reunite with your husband, your wife, your children. Everybody must seek family. You must unite. Unite in organizations. You must unite. But many of y'all, when this thing really gets to rolling, you're going to die. That's why the blood is going to rise so high in this battle of Armageddon. Because so many of you are individuals. Anybody with any sense knows when you are part of a group, when you're part of a family, you survive better. Even if you're unemployed, the more people you know, the more people you're close to, the easier it is to find Somebody helped you because of connections helped you find a job. But when you don't know nobody, you're doing your own thing. You're going to suffer all by your damn self and be in the homeless shelter by your damn self. Because you're doing your own thing. But in the beginning of this war that the scriptures call Armageddon, this day of judgment, those who practice individualism you owe your way to an early grave. I don't care how rich, I don't care who the hell you think you are, but when you're by yourself, you're on your way to death. And when things get rough, pretty soon these groups will interface with one another because it's about survival. Nobody gonna give a damn about black, white, and all that other crap. Early death is coming to the individual. Mark my words. I'm telling you. I'm doing my own thing. Keep doing your own thing. And your body will rot. Because nobody's going to care about your body enough to even bury it under the ground. Leave it for the vultures and scavenger dogs or whoever. Mercy for black people is over. There are a lot of pro-black folks that like to, to, to tell uh, the so-called Negro, the descendants of slaves in America, want to keep giving us these pretty stories, how God going to come out the sky and do this, and tell you how beautiful you are and, and all like this. Your day is over. The black people in this country are not ignorant no more. They just like being stupid. So since you want to be stupid, there's a consequence. You have had the best teachers. Black people produce the best pastors and preachers and ministers. And you do not respond to none of them. They warn you. You've had the best teachers than anybody. And the reason why Armageddon has not come or did not come earlier because of the mercy of the creation because of y'all well because of us. Mercy compassion time has expired because most of y'all dark Europeans that call yourself black you love wicked 
witness. You love the enemy. You love the oppressor. You're so happy because you're married to a white man, married to a white woman. Not the good kind, if there is a good kind, because some of y'all say there is no good white folks. However you think, because all your, all your thinking, how y'all think, all that's getting ready to change. Because it's going to be a matter of survival. You ain't going to give a damn about if you're black, white, man, woman, child. The only thing that's going to be on your mind is survival. And you're going to wish for death, but death's not going to come to you. Oh, woo! Oh, boy, man. Even on YouTube, I hear the people trying to warn, warn the folks. But you won't listen. You won't listen. This world that we live in, according to the prophets of the scriptures, you doom anyway. They don't see no way out. Christians keep talking about being saved. You're not going to be saved. You have not proved worthy of being saved. There's a story in the Bible where Lot was given orders by God to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. And I believe Lot asked God, will you say it's, it's good people in Sodom and Gomorrah? You're not going to kill them too? And God replied back to Lot. He said, Lot, if you can show me any good people in Sodom and Gomorrah, I will save them. I spare their lives. But Lot could not show this God any good people because the good people, you couldn't tell them because they intertwined and look just like the wicked. Just like y'all. I can't tell. When I look in general society, I don't see a good group of people. How come I can't just see this good group? Because y'all doing it. Y'all fornicators. You're adulterers. You're pedophiles. You're rapists. Everything that you see in wicked society, you see in the church. You see in the mosque. You see it, the mentality in people's mind. Murder is in your mind. Rape is in your mind. Envy, jealousy, all these things that make you crazy and insane and wicked. It's in your mind, even though you may not act on it. Because the Bible also said, I'm doing a whole lot of, not quoting, but I'm references to the Bible because that's what y'all into. The scripture said, as a man thinketh, so is he. So you don't have to actually do nothing. Just the very thought of that wickedness, so are you. Woo! Oh man. I hope what you say is true. I want to be around. I want to see Christ. Well, he'll chop your head off. No, see, it ain't about belief. It's about actions. It's not about belief. Because I said I'm a Christian. Because I said I'm a Muslim. That don't mean a damn thing. I don't see many of y'all Behaving like Christians for real. Or Muslims. Or Jews. Because if you really were behaving. Like what you claim. How the hell. Why would God. Want to change anything. The world should be fine. But it's not. Because you're not right. You are unrighteous. You're not good. You are Bad, 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 real, real bad. Quote from Michael. Sick, demented. So there must be on the horizon the ultimate war. And they call it Armageddon. You're living in this day of judgment. <laughs> and he, and, and You want to be saved. But you're not worthy of being saved. Because you know better. You're just as evil and wicked. 
some of y'all in religion as the devil himself. Look. You can even look here on YouTube. People claiming they're Christians and Muslims. Look how they behave. Always cussing somebody out. They justify their profanity. Well, you see, uh, God said damn and God said ass. They want to they justify their wickedness. Because they part of this world. Jesus the Christ said, be in the world, but not of this world. But when we take a look at you, we can't tell you from nobody else. So all of this, all of this must fall. There must be a new heaven and new earth. Drastic change calls for drastic measures. And that's what this war of Armageddon is about. That's what the day of judgment is about. We're living in a unrighteous and wicked, dreadful, nasty, foul, filthy, vile world. And it needs to be changed. So the ultimate war must occur to take those who are in control out of power. And people only respond To life threatening conditions. And what you are about to. Enter. Is life threatening. Condition. If you notice. <clears throat> as long as things are peaceful. As long as things. Are calm. People want to be violent. They don't get along. Always arguing. Always want to debate. Whatever. Filled with hatred. Dislike for one another. But. If you give them. A life threatening condition. Tornadoes. Earthquakes. Some kind of big natural disaster. Then. The people because. There's a life threatening. Situation. You notice. Like some instance. If you was on the on the Titanic, when people are in a life threatening situation, they can look beyond race, they can look beyond color, they can look beyond gender or class, because now the primary objective, I got to survive. I gotta try to save my life. You have Caucasian people, some of these races. I hate niggers. Yeah, boy, I'm talking to you, boy. I don't like colors like you. But if they need a blood transfusion, if they don't get it, they'll die. A life-threatening situation. Well, sir. The only thing we got that can save you is black blood. Black blood? Yes, sir. Now, you do have some racist folks. And you can, you can even flip the script because you have some black folks that really hate white folks too. I don't, I, I don't want no white blood in me. But then... You have a life-threatening situation. And because people fear death. I don't like the Negro. But next thing you know. They are accepting that black blood to save their life. But sometimes that's what it takes to awake people. To break that shackle from their mind. Because now here you are. A racist white guy or a black man that really, really don't like because black people can't be racist. 
but you have a black guy that really don't like white folks, no matter, you know, however. But here is a white man with a black man's blood. Here's a black man with a white man's blood. You can't look at things the same because that's the blood that saved your life. So now when you look at black folks, racist, Caucasian, you really can't, it's very difficult for you to talk the way you talk because, damn it, you got black blood running through your, your, your veins now. But that's sometimes life-threatening uh, situations must occur in order for us to think sanely. Because right now, as long as we are comfortable, nigger, honky, chink, Jew boy, we got all kinds of names. But a situation, ah, a situation is on the rise where pretty soon ain't nobody going to be thinking about black, white, red, male, female. How much money you got? It's about survival. And only groups will survive. The individuals will die. So you don't have to worry about, I'm doing my own thing. You won't hear that in just a few moments in time. <laughs> the all, regardless whether... Uh, the Middle East gets its act together and it's all, all peaches and cream. Regardless, the oil is running out. Clean water, fresh water is running out. Your air is poison. Food is becoming scarce all over this planet. There is a great disaster to threaten the life of humanity, period. It might look like I might get my wish. Destroy all of you. But it's not up to me. If it was up to me, you only have 30 seconds. 30 seconds to live. Because I don't want to give you a chance to do nothing. Well, I'll... I'm going to be destroyed. Let me know you're not going to do nothing. You have not earned nothing. You need immediate destruction as far as I'm concerned. Immediate. But, oh well, it's not up to me. A new birth. The shedding of blood. Great pain. The kingdom of heaven is in you. There must be a changing of this mind. It's nothing spooky. It's, not, it's nothing you don't have to look in the sky. This mind that we have today must be destroyed. This mind filled with racism, gender bias, classism, this mentality must be destroyed if the human being wants to survive and evolve, if 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 it is, if oh whew, if it is not destroyed, then we should be made to go extinct because we cannot continue to keep going down this forbidden and dire path leading to really nowhere. Except you are a, an intelligent savage. You can drive a car. You can wear a tie. You can go up in the space shuttle. But your mentality is worse than a lion. Worse than a hyena. Worse than any other carnivore. You are an intelligent savage. And some of y'all, if we could look and take a peek in some of y'all bedrooms. You call it sex. You take penises and licking vagina and you're doing all kinds of nasty filth. 
in your bedrooms. Things animals don't even do. And you think there's nothing wrong with it. That's sex. If the activity does not result in the birth of a baby, that's not sex. But they use sex to justify nasty, foul, filthy, and vile behavior. This world needs to be destroyed. Pornography. Sex is entertainment. It is looked upon as something filthy and vile. And then you wonder why the children that come from up out of that, born from up out of that activity, because y'all don't give a damn, all those things formulate the child. Your filthy thoughts, your vile thoughts, all that, it goes and becomes part of the sperm, it becomes part of the egg. You don't trip off of it because you can't see it. That's beyond your sight. But when that child and these children are born, you can see it. And you wonder why. Why the children is like that? Why? Because of what you did. You did, most of y'all did it in ignorance because you don't know no damn better. Survival. This Armageddon, this transition is right around the corner. You see signs of it all over the earth. It begins with the oppressed beginning to rise up. What you see in Libya, Bahrain, or wherever, Egypt, that's just a sign. And it's coming to the United States. You're not going to be left out because the United States of America is the ultimate oppressor. It's the number one evil. It is the number one wicked deity because they have become gods that influence the whole world. It is the Babylon, the mystery Babylon. And many of your preachers and teachers and prophets tell you that this America is the Babylon. It has become a habitation of every fowl and filthy bird. And the symbol of the United States is the eagle. Not a fowl and filthy bird. I like eagles. It should have been a vulture because that's what America really represents. Exploitation, abuse of others. A parasite, a tick. That's what it is. America the beautiful. How can you be beautiful when you were born from out of slavery? The taking of other people's land. You are a liar and a deceiver. Rapist. You have no honor, no character. And you see this in the children of racist Caucasian people. I ain't do nothing. They have no character. They have no remorse. They show no kind of apology for what their ancestors done at all. They blame the victims. Whatever black folks are, you made them that way. We didn't learn nothing from Africa. We were not born in Arabia or China. If I cuss you out, Guess who taught me cuss words? If I drink liquor and get drunk, guess who gave me the liquor? Show me how to get drunk. During slavery, the black man wanted to take care of his babies. Who took the babies away from him? So he couldn't take care of them. Now, many of these black men have no connection to their flesh. What's wrong with them? They lost the connection to their babies. They lost the connection to their women. Many of these black men hate black women. I hate. Woo! Many of these black men hate black women. Don't even really know why. And no matter how you explain to them and talk to them, it's, the black woman is our problem. 
The black woman is our problem. He don't even know why. So there is no... It should be no surprise to you that we have finally gotten to this part of the road of what, of what will become redemption and change for the human being. It can either go one or two ways. Either you're going to be righteous, has nothing to do with religion. Righteous only simply means you're going to walk in a manner which is, which is beneficial to the development of the human being. And the human being evolves into what y'all call God. But it has nothing to do with religion. It's about developing yourself. From a child to an adult. From a human being to what some may call God. Or either you're going to be evil because you benefit. There's something about, there's nothing about America, there's nothing about this world that I love. Nothing. I call you out. When you do wrong, I call you out. I'm not going to be silent. I'm not going to be the good people that do nothing. But most of y'all are. You in love with the wicked. You make excuses and defend the wicked. Why? This is what I understand. <clears throat> These dark Europeans. If you said something negative about Caucasian people, here come these black folks running around defending. White people don't need you to defend them. They have scholars, they have historians, they have lawyers, they have CNN, NBC, Fox. They don't need your nigga help, but there they go. Don't be talking about white folks. You are racist. You don't even know what a racist is. Look up the history of what racism is. Black people cannot be racist. I don't care what the dictionary say. The dictionary... Is limited in what it can offer. It can't give you volumes and volumes of information. That's a, a small definition. And some folks take advantage of that because they know the average person is just going to be stupid. I want to say this in my conclusion. The scriptures Describe the human being as a sheep. And a sheep is a herd animal. A sheep will go wherever you point it and make it go. It will not rebel against you. You make the some sheep will, but generally you tell the sheep to go to the left. They go to the left. That's how it is. That's how it is with herd animals. And what do you do with herd animals? In America, you round up the cows and the chickens and the pigs, and you put them in these pens, and they await being slaughtered. They have no idea. You keep giving them a little corn or whatever. Here you are entrapped in your mind, in a pen in your mind, trapped in a nation. I don't care how educated you think you are. You are controlled by forces you have no idea. You don't know who your shepherd is. Because you think you're doing your own thing. This my own mind. Well, 
If it is your own mind, how come you're doing everything somebody else is doing already? Doing dumb stuff. You can't mess with me because I already know how you think. Because if you're doing your own thing, then I would have no idea how you think. Because you're doing your own thing. But you thinking just like anybody else. Because you're a sheep. You're a herd animal. And now you've been led to slaughter. The reason there is a need for a Christ with a sword to come back is to release you out of your pen. And those who own the corrals, those who own these, these pens that got you in trap, they're not going to let somebody easily come and set you free. So the Jesus or the Christ of the Bible have to come prepared to deal with this shepherd who is a wicked shepherd, an uh, exploited shepherd, a business ex uh, uh, shepherd, unlike Jesus. They call Jesus the good shepherd. And Jesus, everything Jesus did, he denied himself so he can help others. A beautiful shepherd. But these who, these wicked shepherds, these demons who y'all have fallen in love with, give you nothing. Your meat will be grinded to make hamburger and lamb chops and whatever. There is no benefit to you. You're, not, you're nothing but something that they can use. Unlike the Christ wants to set you free. Wants to set us free from the wicked shepherd. Y'all call him Satan. Y'all call him the devil. But I don't want to get into a whole lot of religious stuff. But drastic Drastic times call for drastic measures. The mind of racism, the mind of gender bias, classism, these top three things is what's messing us up and they must be destroyed. So a ultimate war must come into existence. A birth must occur. To bring in new life. Because something. Time is getting ready to take out this old world. And the scripture said. And the former thing shall pass away. Y'all trying to hold on. To the former thing. Christianity is the former thing. Islam is the former thing. Judaism. All y'all religions is part of the former thing. If y'all was right. There would be no need for a war of Armageddon. There will be no need for a judgment if you're right. But you're not right. You pretending and trying to give the illusion of being right. But you're damn really, 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 really wrong. It ain't my fault. It's your fault. It ain't my fault because y'all fake. Because y'all are. Excuse makers. I backslid. No, you wanted to commit fornication. You wanted to take a drink. You like to cuss. You ain't backslid. You like evil. But your scriptures tell you. You can only serve one master. You can't serve two. Only one. What you don't want to admit is you like evil. You like some beer. You like to mess around with your brother's wife. You like pornography. You like all those different things. But at the same time, you claim you love God too. You cannot serve two masters, one or the other. So it is not about being a woman, being a man, it's not about being rich or poor or black or white, red and yellow. It's about do you want what is good for the human family or do you want to continue down this trail of evil? And the scriptures have determined that this world of evil is about to expire. 
the ultimate war. Babylon must be destroyed. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Just like the fall of Rome. Because they finger point. Making excuses. Because they benefit from what's going on. They don't want nothing to change. But the creation and that which loves the human being. Regardless to your color, your race, your gender, your class. Wants to look out for what is in the best interest of this life form. You are too intelligent just to throw away. Again, for me, I would throw your ass away. <laughs> I would throw y'all. I would throw us away. You are unworthy of living. But just like the Bible and Quran say, God on the creation is just so merciful, compassionate, loving. I gave up on you a long time ago. If you if you if you walked in front of my car, I'd have run you over. <laughs> Woo! I just don't have it. I don't have that kind of patience no more. But even according to the scriptures. God or the creation runs out of patience too. There's a time for mercy and there's a time for punishment. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. Now you're living in a time you have to make a choice. Keep going the way you're going. And be destroyed. That's the bottom line. Y'all looking for a Messiah. You've had many prophets and Messiahs. You had all kinds of warners and prophets. You like evil and you ignore them. Look at your behavior. I don't see peaceful people. I don't see loving and compassionate people. Only until your life is being threatened. It's a, it's a matter of survival. So since that's the only way, it's coming. Slowly but surely, it's coming. And i tell you all this too. There are many people who think guns are going to save you. Oh, y'all better get your guns. You better get your food and your water. You better do this. Nothing is going to save you. Many are going to perish. It's written by the prophets. And it's common sense. Your guns can only help to a certain point. Saving some food and water only goes go to a certain point. This, is, this should be group activity. It's about group survival. And that group wants what is right, not what is wrong. Because if it's wrong, it'll come up in that group and destroy it. Regardless to color, regardless to race, all those things, it's about survival. You need to get that through your head. So don't come to me talking about black this. I'm not about color. Color was created by the wicked to divide the human family to put us in the condition that we're in right now. As well as gender and class. Those things are over. And it's a damn shame. Millions and millions are going to die in order to bring this into being. But if that is what humanity must sacrifice in order to live, then so be it. I might not see this. You might not see this. But I'm telling you, your children, somebody going to see it real, real soon. These books called the Bible, the book called the Quran, and all these other religious teachings, they did not survive for the fun of it. 
They survive to give you a warning. Either change your ways or change your ways voluntarily or your ways will be changed involuntarily. You made the choice that it will be involuntarily. So enjoy your punishment. Enjoy the consequence. And you brought it down. You passed it down to your babies. Prophecy can always be changed if you change your mind, change your behaviors and your actions. But chances are you won't. So you have to get kicked in the ass. That's a damn shame. And you think, and you really think that you should be saved. You think that you're worthy of life. You want to get upset with me. And don't understand why I say, just kill all, destroy all of humanity and be done. What about the good people? Just because you have two good people, don't mean they will produce good children. Because you have nice people, did everything they could to raise decent children. And the children still, be, they still the, the children still turn out foul. So, to be on the safe side... Just wipe out all humanity and be done with it. And let another life form come up to prove more worthy of their life. Because these have proven very unworthy. But again, it's up to you. There's still some time left. If you be wise and break the shackle of racism, break the shackle of classism, break the shackle of of gender bias and perhaps the doom or this war that was prophesied it may be avoided and we can change and shift this direction to a much better place but I don't have no confidence in you I really doubt it I really doubt it so let the final game begin this is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. This is the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This was and is the Realities Temple on Earth.